Foster, Malik Brown, Tom Knippel, Darren Harris, Cameron Sheffield, Mason Gillis, and Neil Begovich will be the blue team here tonight. We're set for a little basketball. David Shumate and John Roth, great to have you with us tonight for Countdown to Craziness. It'll be Malu Watch and Brown to jump it off. And away we go. Brown got a little bit of an early start. I think they're going to make him re-jump it. That's one way to get the tap away from the seven foot two guy. Yeah, I was wondering how that was going to happen with that uh, nine foot eight standing reach. Seems like he could just stand there and win the tap. So we'll do it again. One at the clean way this time. And here comes Caleb Foster to get it started. Rocking the headband this year. I like the look. He's got it on the right side of the floor. Sends it up top. Knipple right away. Short on a three. And the rebound tapped into the hands of Gillis. A chance to reset. Foster will reload. That won't go. And the rebound inside for Cooper Flag. Just underway in the scrimmage. James taking it in transition. Off the window blocked already. We see the rim protection early. Knipple, Harris into the corner, kicked out of bounds by Flag. It'll stay on this end of floor with 9.31 to play in the first half of this scrimmage that will feature two 10-minute halves. You see Brown all over the floor, led the ACC last year and steals with 71, can get after it blocking shots as well. Foster weaving through some traffic. He'll try a deep one. That's offline right, and Malawatch chases down the rebound. So three threes already for the blue team. Still in search of our first points. Three three attempts, I should say. You see on James is picked up by Gillis at the top of the key. You know this team is going to play fast this year. They're also going to be very hard to score against. Oh, there's a backdoor lob for Flag. Slipped on the way through, but able to catch it along the baseline. Now send it up top for Proctor. Plenty of time. Seven to shoot. Between the legs of the dribble. Got to the baseline. Put it off the window and down. Wave it off, though. Offensive foul. Knipple drew the charge. Tyrese with a grin on his face after that uh, nice move to the basket. Probably didn't think that he'd committed an offensive foul there, but a good job by Knipple of standing his ground and taking that contact on the drive. Well outside the restricted area for Knipple. Freshman out of Milwaukee. And now Caleb will walk it across. Going to work on Sion James. Underhand scoop for Harris. Looking cross court, nothing there. So up top for Brown, and now Knipple gets a touch. Half the shot clock is gone. Brown for Gillis, playing catch up top with nine to shoot. Knipple off of a Brown screen, works his way into the paint, nearly fell down, kicks to the corner, taken away by James. 90 seconds in, no score. In transition, Evans, Canada three, and the rebound inside for Caleb Foster. Malawatch a little bit slow getting back to his feet. Opportunity in transition for Harris, and he hits a three. Describes himself as a lethal shooter and he shows it early on here the first three points of the night Cooper backing out to midcourt there's James on the left wants to drive the baseline on Gillis cut off spins at the left block put it up left it short and the rebound for Gillis and here comes Foster in transition two minutes gone three to nothing the blue team out to the early lead nearly turned it over in transition but it's last touch by the white team along the left baseline and an opportunity to get reset this team does want to run as much as possible. Something that worked on every practice is that transition game. Caleb looking to get it in. Waits, lobs it up. Nearly stolen by Flag. Able to make its way to Brown. Now Knipple a three. That one's good as well. His first bucket. And it's a six to nothing start for the blue team. on for Flag into the paint. Knocked loose by Brown. Boy, he's been active early. It'll stay with the white team on this side of the floor. 7.36 to play in the first half. Again, two 10-minute halves in the scrimmage tonight. And the Cameron Crazies who were rocking earlier as the team was being introduced. Kind of always interesting to see and count down the craziness. Who they start to pull for as the game moves along. Obviously pulling for everybody individually. As Tyrese gets into the paint, drives, scoops with the left hand, left it short, but he's fouled and will shoot two. We talked about the assist to turnover ratio a year ago, 2.95 to 1. 25th in the country, of course, was a captain as well. Tyrese can do a little bit of everything. Obviously, he can shoot the three, get other guys involved. And you can tell just looking at him as he gets the first free throw to go, John, much more physical presence this year in practice, I thought, in the offseason and into fall. And he's talked about being on campus more and just getting more playing reps, getting time. Obviously, Will Stevens, who oversees the strength and conditioning program, 
he looks like he's really growing into being an elite player this year in the ACC as he knocks down a pair of free throws for the first couple of points of the night for the white team. Yeah, it's uh, hard to forget that. He actually came to Duke a year early because he reclassified out of high school in Australia. So he was very young when he got here, and he's growing into his body. Harris a little strong on the three. Knipple trying to save it, able to do so off of Sion James. He'll stay on this end of the floor. And Knipple will cue it in in front of the Blue Devil bench. Six to two, a four-point lead for the blue team here in the early going. Just over seven minutes to play in the first half. Knippel working his way to the right, into the corner it goes. Gillis can't shoot, over flag, 10 on the topper. They play catch on the right side of the floor. Now here's Gillis up top, he'll take a three, won't hit it, and Malawatch has the rebound. The white team in search of their first field goal in the corner. See if Cooper can change that. Can't hit the three, and the weak side rebound for Knippel. They're two out of seven talking about the blue team. Here's Foster up top. Knipple works his way to the left, and there's Harris. Foster surveys the defense, weaves through, has Proctor on the hip, forced it up, and too strong on the runner. The rebound tapped up, nearly crawled in. Gillis got it back, knocked out of his hands by James. He'll stay on this end of the floor, and we're seeing how good this team is going to be defensively. The long reach to knock things loose along the baseline. We've seen the block shots already. It is going to be a very difficult team to score against. And they're finding it difficult to score against each <laughs> yeah. other. That's how you can tell. They've got some good looks, but they're, everything's being challenged. Harris going to try another three. That won't go. Two out of eight from three now for the blue team. Eight of their nine shots have come from outside. Tyrese into the paint. Up top, James. He'll take a deep one and hit it. The first field goal for the white team comes from Sion James. And it's 6-5 to five early on. In the corner, Gillis can't answer. And the rebound for Malawatch. Four minutes gone in our first half. A one-point lead for the blue team. Here's Flag on the right. Wants to drive. Got by Knippel into the paint. Righty scoop. Got it. So Cooper Flag has scratched the score sheet. And just like that, the white team has surged ahead 7-6. to six. It's Effortless. 17 years old. One of four Gatorade Players of the Year amongst this freshman class. Cooper, of course, Knippel, the Gatorade Player of the Year in Wisconsin. As Foster rises up on the left side and can't hit, Darren Harris claimed the award from Virginia. Isaiah Evans out of North Carolina. Gungba couldn't get it. He was coming out of Virginia, and Harris had it already. And Cooper got it nationally, but he also <laughs> got it as a freshman when he was back in Maine. As Proctor couldn't come out of there with it. And there's a drive up and in. Karen Harris with five here in the early going. And the blue team seesaws back in front. Eight to seven as we hit the midway point of our first half. Cooper going to work up top. Works his way to the left, wants to drive, peels out on the baseline, sends it up top for Evans. He'll go to work on Harris, force it up, can't hit. Brown the rebound, lost it though, but a foul is going to be called on Malawatch on the rebounding action. And that's going to chase us to a timeout. Just underway, 4.50 to play in our first half. And it's the blue team leading the white team. Eight to John Roth. Great to have you with us tonight. On ACC Network Extra and also those listening along the Blue Devil Sports Network. It'll be the blue team in possession out of the timeout as Foster will bring it across. Sends it for Knipple on the left. Picked up by Sion James. And now Harris again. Into the paint he goes. A little fade away. Short. And the rebound for James. Nearly knocked loose by Gillis, but able to claim it. He'll bring it across, looking to retake the lead. Sion so active in whatever community he's in. He has the Sion James Foundation. Right now, he's providing supplies for K-12 students in Durham while enhancing their personal development through formal and informal in mentorship, I should say. His flag can hit the three on the left. Evans up top will take one and miss it strong. But that is just a piece of what Sion James brings to the table. Just a really mature young man. As Knippel will bring it across and work his way to the left baseline and send it back up top. For Darren Harris, threw it into no man's land. It's taken away by James. A hit ahead for flag. A chance to run three on two. Evans going to launch and hit a three. A smart play by Cooper Flag. Uh, found that the defender had gotten ahead of him and blocked his path through the basket. So simply turned around and fed a nice pass outside of the perimeter for the three. The consensus five star recruit. Puts the white team ahead 10 to 8 as we get a foul inside. Spotted on the white team. And we'll see if free throws are coming. Yes, indeed, free throws coming for the blue side. 
Yeah, Isaiah Evans, we talked about being the North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. One of four guys who played that award at some point in their career was Mr. Basketball last year as well. 30 and 3 with North Mecklenburg last year, won a Class 4A state championship in the playoff run, averaged 31.3 points per game. That's ridiculous. <laughs> The year before, I think they were runners-up or got to the finals. He had a 62-point game in the state playoffs the year before. Unbelievable. Foster couldn't hit the free throw. One more coming. On the way. Got that one. So Caleb has his first point, and it's a one-point game with three and a half minutes to play until the break. Sion will bring it up. Foster will pick him up defensively, bounce it off to the left, and Proctor, they play catch on the left side of the floor. Looking cross court, nothing doing. Off of a couple of screens, send it for Tyrese. Into the paint he goes. Back feed for Evans in a two-hand stuff. Evans lurking around down on the baseline and just read his teammate's drive, played off of him, and was a willing recipient to put that one down. You get another look at the wonderful dish along the baseline. And Evans to throw it down now, a steal by James. And a chance to run up by three, scoop it with the right hand. No, but he's fouled and will shoot two as he crashes into the cheerleaders to all right. And the foul will be whistled on Caleb Foster, and free throw is coming. The white team got off to a bit of a slow shooting start, but they've crept the shooting percentage up to 36% now, four out of 11. Couple of threes, the blue team at 23%, two of eight from outside. It'll be Sion to shoot a pair. As we told you, the grad transfer from Tulane played four seasons at Tulane, started 107 games along the way as he misses the first free throw, better than a thousand career points. He became the first player to win the AAC Sportsmanship Award twice as we're talking about his involvement in the community. Absolutely, and he was also their conference's uh, SAC chairman for a couple of years, mm -hmm. the Student Athlete Advisory Council for their whole conference. So obviously uh, someone uh, well-regarded and well-respected by many different constituents. Just a couple of free throws here, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by the blue team, I believe. Yep, it'll stay on this end of the floor as Gillis couldn't control it. Flag Evans, Malo Watch, Proctor, and James, the five on the floor wearing white right now. Gillis, Foster, Brown, Knipple, and Harris out there in blue. In the corner, it's Cooper. Bounce pass to the baseline, stolen by Gillis. So a chance to go back to work, trailing by three as Caleb will bring it across. The sophomore out of Harrisburg, North Carolina. Trying to come off of a screen, they send it to the right in Knipple. Khan into the paint, rises up and scores. A little teardrop from Khan Knipple. And it's 12 to 11. He's got five tied with Harris for the scoring lead for the blue team. Five so far for Evans as well to lead the way for the white team. Trying to add to it. Can't. Oh, did get the roll. A friendly roll off the bracket, the front of the rim and down. Isaiah Evans, Evans with eight now, and it's a four point lead for the white team. Brown for Knippel. Comes off of a screen set by Brown. Fed it back to him in the paint. Lost it. James out of there with it. A chance to add to a four-point lead as we under two minutes playing the half of another deflection and a steal in transition. It's Foster to the baseline. Spinning through. He's fouled. It will shoot two. And probably a smart foul for Isaiah Evans to prevent what might have been a showtime punch as Foster was rising up. Certainly was going to score. Might have tried something spectacular there. You can see the creativity that we may find on the floor for the Blue Devils this year with Caleb Foster with such a nice move inside to get around his defender. We get another look. Follow watch was hanging out thinking I might get a swat from behind. Might have happened, yeah. There's Caleb to the line for a pair. Missed that one. The slow start at the charity stripe for either side. The blue team is now one for three and the white team two out of four at the free throw line. Second attempt. Got the roll there. Caleb's two points have come at the charity stripe, and it's a three-point game with under two minutes to play in the half. Tyrese backs out on the right, lobs it to the left, Cooper flag. Nearly touched one in the corner for James. Instead, he'll drive into the paint, put it up, and got the roll. So much power, but then the skill to finish. And the lead is five as Foster gets down the floor quickly. Malawatch maybe got a piece, but Brown there to clean it up with two hands. 
Good job running the floor by Malik Brown that time just to be ready for anything, and he was ready to cash in an offensive rebound. And the lead for the white team is three as Tyrese Proctor can't hit on the left baseline. Knipple, the weak side rebound. Here he comes in transition. Three on five, going to wait for help. It's Foster at the top of the key. Lobs it to the corner. Knipple a three on the right, and he hits it. Con Knipple dials one up. He's got eight now, and we're tied at 17. We've seen a couple of threes, but also a nice medium range on a drive, so a lot of variety in his offensive game. Final minute now of the opening half, 17 apiece. It was a little bit of slow start, slow start shooting for both sides, but they're certainly warming to the challenge now. And it's been the freshman. Knipple leading the way for the blue team. He's got eight. Evans leading the way for the white team. He's got eight as well. Tyrese to the right of the center circle. Plenty of time, 13 to shoot. Wants to drive on Brown. Sends it to the right corner and Evans. Into the paint, kicks to the left. There's James. Sets the feet and hits a three. See on James. White. And we'll see what Caleb does here. He's got two points so far. Both of them came with the charity stripe. Trying to get by Cooper. 14 to shoot. Step back three. Wouldn't go. The rebound fought for. Tyrese tipped it once, twice, but it came to Brown. Now Knipple's open in the corner. Can't hit. Weak side rebound Evans. They've got time for the white team. Five seconds to play in the half. Four and three. Harris providing pressure and a foul is given. Cooper will be the inbounder. Proctor trying to shake loose. Cannot. They wait. Lob it to midcourt. Evans has it. Two and one. Not going to get a shot off. And the white team will have a three-point lead at the break. 20 to 17, our score. We'll take a break, come back with the second half. Guy <laughs> like Malu watching this time, come on, wins the tap. And James will bring it across. Here's Foster on the right end of the paint. Drives, locking foul called. Knipple drew a charge in the first half, not this time, and Caleb's going to be rewarded with free throws. Caleb attacking the basket, though. That's the aggressiveness that the Blue Devils want to see when he's on the move inside. To me, he was a fascinating player to watch a year ago. He does what the team needs, right? I mean, we've seen the assist numbers, two to one assist to turnover ratio, 58 assists, just 29 turnovers. We've seen the scoring punch, the 18 we talked about earlier against uh, Michigan State, had a seven assist game against Pittsburgh. Just knows how to get everybody involved and knows how to win. He certainly does, and I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, improve and grow on the defensive end as well this year. He's certainly got the personality for it and and the leadership that he exudes a lot of it's by example and people just kind of respect what he's all about as a person Locks down a couple of free throws and some full court pressure for the blue team as Knippel will try to bring it up send it to the left and there's Proctor one of those things John Shire is going to have in his tool bag this year if he wants it being able to pressure with all the different bodies they can throw out there is this time the white team turns it over as Proctor got caught up in a screen up top. And now Caleb will bring it across. It is a busy, busy preseason for the Blue Devils. Countdown to craziness tonight. Two weeks from tomorrow, they'll be back in this building taking Link, taking on Lincoln out of Pennsylvania. One o'clock tip, first exhibition game of the season as Malawatch can't hit inside. Gill is trying to save it, does. Didn't hit the rim, so only 10 to shoot. And then the Brotherhood run against Arizona State the following Sunday. That'll be a 7 o'clock tip here at Cameron. Oh, there's Malu Watch to throw it down inside. Excellent recognition on getting that past him as he broke free right in the middle of the lane under the basket. What a target. And when he's free inside, you just put two on the board and head to the other end. A 4 to nothing start for the blue team as Cooper gets inside. It crawled off the front of the rim. And Caleb Foster out of there with it. Quick hitter inside for James, got behind the defense and lays it in. And a great feed that time from Foster out beyond the three-point arc. Watched him break toward the basket. Perfectly timed pass. And a quick 6-0 start for the blue team. Flag trying to change that. Blocked by Malawatch. Got his own rebound, though, and put it back up and in. Cooper flag able to score. And it's 6-2 to two at the other end. Oh, what a block by Brown. And a chance to run. It's flag with the reverse stuff. Blue Devils passing ahead in transition. Cooper behind the defense and a nice finish. Six to four. Some oohs and ahs here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. He just glides down the floor. Just looks effortless for the Newport main, pro main product. 
played his high school ball at Montverde Academy last year. As James nearly lost it on the sideline, Harris able to save it. Six to shoot, inside he goes. Somebody lost a sneaker, that was Evans. The bucket good, and it's eight to four, and they'll stop play to get the shoe back on. We mentioned flag playing at Montverde a year ago, 33-0 winning a title. As we see Neil Begovic for the first time come out there for the blue team. Came over a year ago, the graduate transfer from San Francisco. Darren Harris having a nice night. And it's 8-4 here in our second scrimmage. 7.40 to play in it. Second half, so to speak, but they reset the scoreboard as Proctor can't hit a three. And now here's Malawatch. Caleb in transition with a four-point cushion. Works his way through some traffic, slipped on the way through. They say he was bumped. Yeah, interesting that Cooper Flagg helped Montverde win that national championship of the high school ranks last year. But they, the team they beat for the national championship, Paul the sixth out of Virginia, which has two players on this Duke team as well, uh, Darren Harris and Gongba. Those, so those guys were going up against each other at the highest level of the high school realm last year. Now they're teammates. You hear the ovation. One of the fan favorites is on the floor. Spencer Hubbard, 5'8", 157 out of Los Angeles. We saw him 10 times a year ago. Anytime he hits a bucket, it nearly blows the roof off this place. Caleb spinning up top between the legs of the dribble. Gets a nice screen from Malawatch, backs out of it. Now Kaman going to launch and bank it in. My goodness. A three-pointer for the seven-footer. Wow. Friendly banking hours here late on a Friday, 11 to 4, three minutes gone in this second half, second scrimmage as Proctor answers from the top of the key. 11 to 7, the score with 6.50 to go. Well, you know for Kama on a 7 2, no one's blocking that up top. You got plenty <laughs> of time to set the feet and do whatever you need to at the high release point as Caleb sends it to the left, and there's Gillis playing catch up top with 12 to shoot. Into the corner it goes for Begovic. And now a shovel pass for Harris. He'll try a deep one, a little bit too strong. Rebound fault for Begovic has it. A chance to reset. Caleb will take a three. Banks it in again. Must be that into the floor. Two threes in a row, banking off the glass. And it's 14 to seven, which is over six minutes to go. Cooper on the drive. Malawatch got a piece. Here's Harris the other way. Three on four, gonna wait for help or push it. Finds a trailer, Malawatch. To the right, there's Begovic a three. Why not? The blue team feeling it from deep and it's 17 to seven. A 10 point lead on the strength of a run of threes. Proctor to the baseline, tries to feed it to Knippel. Was it tipped? Yes, they say. It'll stay on this end of the floor. As we see Cameron Sheffield come in for the blue team. Grant transfer from Rice. Wearing number 13 this year, wore number five when he was playing at Rice. We'll also see Spencer Hubbard come out. You hear some groans, some murmurs from the crazies anytime <laughs> Spencer leaves the floor. Spencer did graduate last year. Yeah. <laughs> was able to come back this year, though, for a, a, a fifth year. As we're set to go again along the baseline, it'll be Evans to cue it in. Actually, going to have him reposition and inbound it deep along the left sideline. Proctor had it knocked out of his hands by James and left inbound again. I have a feeling James is going to have a lot of minutes on this for this team this year. I know there's a lot of minutes uh, to be claimed by a lot of talented players, but it seems like he's somebody who's going to find a way to get a lot of them. Uh, that to me is one of the fascinating things about this team. John Shires talked about it a little bit. Obviously, they're long, very good defensively. They can play in transition. They can play in a variety of different ways if they want to. And so many big guys they can throw out there at the front line. Uh, but also a lot of skill, a ton of wings on this team as Proctor scoops can't hit. Brown can't clean it up. They fight for the rebound. And out of there with it is Sheffield. A chance to run for Foster, two on two. Into the paint, put it up, blocked by Flag. And the outlet pass. Nope. Oh, they're going to saw Golden. So count the bucket. Would love to get another look at that, and we do. Close. Very close. close. Very close. Caleb will agree with the call as we get another peek. Was it on the glass? Hard to tell. But the white team's got some work to do. Down by a dozen, 19 to 7 with five and a half minutes to go. Cooper and Proctor playing catch. 
Tyrese gonna wait shovel it off to the right Cooper base on drive got by Foster and hits from 15 the word that just keeps coming to mind is effortless it's so smooth smooth you're exactly right 19 to 9 now as we hit the midway point of our second half second 10 minute mini scrimmage of the night James into the paint scoops it to the baseline Mala watch up and under couldn't finish punch follow wouldn't go for James come on there to clean it up that's how you finish Second effort opportunity, just threw it down with both hands. 21 to 9, a 12 point cushion for the blue team. See if Knipple can cut into it in the corner, cannot. The rebound tipped out, it came to Proctor in a fresh 20. A touch pass to the left, there's Evans. He'll take one, can't hit the three, and James clears the miss. The blue team by 12 and in possession, up 21 to 9. Foster, baseline drive, scores again, this time with the left hand. And it's a 14 point lead with 422 to go. Proctor down court. Can't hit the layup and the rebound for Gillis. Mala watch back to his feet behind the play. Here's James behind the back into the paint. Lefty scoop high off the window. Got the roll. See on James with four here in the second 10 minute scrimmage. And all of a sudden the lead swells to 16 25 to 9. This is a 14 to 2 push. Proctor trying to quell the momentum. Can't hit a three. And now Mala watch has it. But a good microcosm of how they want to play this year right before that possession. Three straight trips down the floor were coast-to-coast -coast transition opportunities for the two sides. And Three of four from outside hit both of their free throws. And the white team is just four of 14. And James trying to add to a 16-point lead out of the timeout. Flag all over him trying to poke it loose. James from watch. Damon sends it to the left. There's Foster. Now back inside. That pass rejected by Tyrese. Two to shoot. Caleb going to have to launch and hit. My goodness, what a bucket. Over the defender and just drained it to put his team up 28 to 9. If you look at things in aggregate between the two 10 minute games or halves, whichever you want to look at it, Caleb's got 14. 28 to 9. As we approach three minutes to play. Cooper going to work on James. Looking cross court, nothing there. Left it for Tyrese. He wheels to the baseline. A couple of ball fakes and a fade away. Can't hit, but it came right to Brown to lay it in. Brown, the grad transfer from Syracuse, cuts it to 17. Twenty-eight to eleven with two forty to go. Malo watch, as we told you, has seven now, three rebounds and an assist. He's patrolling things on the left. Gillis on the drive, spins on Knipple, scoops with the left hand. No, rebound tapped out. It came to Evans. And now here's Knipple. We'll get a moment before we go. I want to tell you the recruiting decision that Malo watch made as he nearly got a block there and committed the foul. He was talking about how he was deciding where he was going to go to school. Of course, Malo watch hails from, from back South Sudan. And he said he was down really to three schools, UCLA, Kansas, and Duke. And he was trying to cut it down. He finally got it down to Duke and Kansas. He was going back and forth and couldn't decide. It was causing him sleepless nights. He said, you know what? I'm just going to flip a coin to decide where I want to go to school. And he flipped the coin, and it actually landed on Kansas. And he said he was really disappointed. And that's when he knew he wanted to come to Duke. <laughs> What course, a cool uh, story. What an intriguing yeah, young man. What, what, yeah, what a guy. And has had a lot of mentorship from a former Blue Devil, also from South Sudan, Luol Deng, who had enjoyed a long NBA career. And he's now head of the Federation of Basketball in South Sudan. And in fact, that's why he's wearing jersey number nine. Luol Deng wore number nine in the NBA when he had his long career. And he's gotten a lot of feedback and a lot of guidance from Luol Deng in his growth in basketball from South Sudan. Uh, of course, Malawatch was a part of that team that played in the Olympics in Paris as Evans can't hit a three off the turnover. Flag the offensive rebound, sends it out for Proctor. Evans thought about another one, said he'll drive, get to the baseline, get it blocked by Malawatch, but a foul is going to be called. If you haven't checked it out, check out the Brotherhood podcast. Caleb is going through with all these guys. He actually asked Kaman about you know that trip to the Olympics and watching other sports what do you get a chance to see and he says once the South Sudan got Olympic got eliminated I should say his favorite sport to go watch was beach volleyball that was right in front of the Eiffel Tower that was a great scene what an environment to watch uh, <laughs> Olympic sports wow and it will be Evans at the free throw line here trailing by 15 with 206 to go of course come on start playing basketball in 2019 
Said he started learning about Duke initially everything these days, right? Social media highlights. And guess who were the highlights of? Zion Williamson. Oh. That's a good place to start. That's it that year. Yeah. I think a lot of people thinking Cooper Flagg will make some of those highlights this year as the second free throw is good. 28 to 15 now. It's an apt comparison, at least as far as preseason buzz. Mm -hmm. Zion certainly came in with quite a following, and Cooper kind of the same for this Duke team. He said pretty candidly, he's not worried about that. He appreciated, appreciates it. He knows it's indicative of something, but he wants to focus on basketball. He's certainly impressed over the summer as a member of the USA men's basketball select team that trains with the U.S. national team as they got ready for Paris. As Brown, nearly another rejection, knocked out of the hands of James to the left. Gillis going to try three and hit it. So Mason Gillis able to hit from outside, make it 31 to 15. As Flag has it quickly in transition up top for Evans. He'll take a three, and that one's good. Isaiah Evans knocks one down from outside. Talking about Cooper, he was the only teenager taken as a part of that USA men's basketball select team. And the lone collegiate player, first collegian since 2013 selected to that group, and he impressed when he was out there. <laughs> He's only 17. He wasn't even a collegian yet. Foster <laughs> able to lay it off the right. And a timeout taken by the white team as it's 33 to 18 with 107 to go. Amazing. He turns 18 in December, by the way. Uh, just, It's just incredible what he has accomplished at the youthful age that he is. And uh, it's built up over the course of a couple of years. He's been the, looked at as the top recruit out of this class for the last couple of years. And looking ahead, a lot of people looking at him as one of the top picks for the uh, NBA draft next year. So it's not just uh, the recruiting experts in college that are talking about him. And a lot of the guys that were watching his exploits at uh, training camp with the Olympic team on that select team. There was a lot of ooing and aahing over some performance out there as well going up against those hardened pros. This flag goes inside and around and out. Malawatch trying to get the rebound, tipped it to Knipple. We're into the final minute now. The blue team up by 15. Evans at the top of the key. Thought about a three. Instead, he'll drive, put it off the window. Oh, Malawatch just engulfs it along the baseline. And here comes Gillis the other way. Even with that, though, Evans is having quite the night. He's the leading scorer for the white team in aggregate. He's got 15 between the two games as Gillis can't hit, and he'll have free throws coming. Foster leading the way for the blue team in aggregate. He's got 16. The white team took the first 10 minutes, 20 to 17. A couple of guys switched teams, and the blue team has had the better of it here in the last 10 minutes, up 33 to 18 with 34.2 to go, and Gillis at the line to shoot two. So that would put Malawash and James on the winning side in both of these contests as they were on that white team in the first half. They switched sides in the second half, and they are winning going away. No chance they're going to let anybody know about that, right? No. no. <laughs> that won't come up. Hey, common denominator. <laughs> as Gillis knocks down a pair, 35 to 18. They might want to go over and shake Caleb's hand, though, as he helped oh, him yeah. <laughs> with the way he played. As Flag steps back and hits a three. Cooper from deep. I think he's totaled 13 for the two games combined. And we're into the final 20 seconds now. Shot clock is off. We're throwing Stanley Borden's out there. Senior center. Seven footer, 241 and at Istanbul, Turkey. Sheffield gets a touch. 10 on the timer. In the corner, Gillis. Up top, Harris. A ball fake and a drive rises up from 15 and hits it. Darren Harris has a nice looking stroke. 37-21, here's Hubbard at the buzzer. Oh man, it wouldn't go. And that'll do it. That would have sent the crazies off their rockers. But as it is, a comfortable win for the blue team, 37 to 21. In the second game, they take it by 16. The white team won the first one, 20 to 17. The leading score for the blue team, as we told you, Caleb Foster had 16. Two and double figures for the white team.